All right, well, to my left, let's start with our wonderful Ellen Hill Zerang from the Tigers. Ellen? Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, and thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. Nobody ever does that. It's like Zinger, Zingaroo, it's every, anyway. So um, uh, Ellen Hill Zerang, I'm Vice President of Marketing for the Detroit Tigers. I am entering into my 20th season. I started when I was very young. Um, and in my capacity as Vice President of Marketing, I oversee marketing, branding, um, special events, promotions, um, digital, kind of everything that's fun. <laughs> um, I work very closely with my colleague Molly and also with my colleague Marcia from Fox Sports Detroit. Um, I am a graduate of Spelman College. I have a degree in English. And before I uh, joined the Detroit Tigers, I worked in radio for Mix 92.3. I was the director of marketing there. And before that, I worked for a small agency which is owned by an African-American woman. It was a special events, promotions. We did anything we could do in the market in the city of Detroit um, to keep the doors open. And the name of that company was Jackie, was uh, Vaughn Marketing, and it was owned by Jackie Vaughn. And I'm at the Detroit Tigers today because um, Jackie Vaughn, after I left, landed a contract at the Detroit Tigers. And this is all about connections. She landed a contract at the Detroit Tigers and called me when I was working at the radio station and said, I think that you should become the marketing manager for the Detroit Tigers. So that's sort of my story in a nutshell. But again, it's about connections. My first boss out of college got me the job that I'm still in today. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Molly Wardak, and I'm the Director of Marketing Strategy with Olympia Entertainment. So my primary responsibilities here, actually within Little Caesars Arena where we're sitting today, are the uh, oversight of all of our partnership activation that runs across all of the um, uh, properties that we own, operate, and are the facility managers for. So that's here at Little Caesars Arena in the Detroit Red Wings, over at Comerica Park with the Detroit Tigers, the Fox Theater, um, all of those great uh, venues that we have the opportunity to be able to um, partner with on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are my primary responsibilities, making sure that all of our partnerships are executed on a daily basis. Um, I started out my career in the NFL. I've been um, here with Olympia Entertainment for just over 11 years. So made a really big switch from, I was talking to some women earlier this afternoon from coming from Joe Lewis Arena to here at Little Caesars Arena. It's been a big difference, um, but all great staples within the city of Detroit. Um, and so as I was mentioning prior to my time here, um, I was working in the NFL with the Miami Dolphins. Um, so have been in sports pretty much all of my career. Um, so it's been, it's been a fantastic ride. I'm a graduate of Ohio University did my undergrad and my two master's degrees there. Um, and my family and I live um, in the suburbs, and we have come to know Detroit as home. So being here 11 years, although I'm not, wasn't born and raised here, um, this is where we call home now, and we're so proud to be a part of this city. Hi, I'm Marcia Turner, and I'm Vice President and General Sales Manager for Fox Sports Detroit. Um, I have the privilege of working with these ladies as well as the Detroit Pistons. We have the exclusive rights agreements for the Detroit Tigers, Detroit Red Wings, and the Detroit Pistons. And so that allows me to work with all of those brands. Um, my responsibility at Fox Sports is to sell advertising and all of those different products, not only on our linear program or, or TV, but also on our digital platforms as well and streaming. Um, we consider ourselves uh, the, the, the Cadillac, if you will, of uh, having these wonderful, wonderful relationships with our teams. Um, we are not anything if it's not for Red Wings, Pistons, and Tigers. So we, we cherish the relationships we have with them. I personally call these two friends. Um, if I, there's something going on in my career, these are two people that I reach out to to talk to and vice versa. So we established very long, steadfast relationships. Um, I've been with Fox for 10 years. I was with the Detroit Free Press for 25 years, basically doing the same thing, running the ad sales department on the print side. Um, I too am a Detroiter. I was born in New Jersey, but moved here when I was seven, so I consider myself a 
be a raised, born and raised person in, from the city of Detroit. Um, we live in Detroit. Um, I have two daughters. I graduated, well, I graduated from Wayne State, but went to Spelman all, all four years. So, but came home and ended up graduating the year my dad died. So, but that's me. Um, that's it. Uh, I would like to say, Molly, I actually just recently met, but to hear you all, you know, again, when you sit with people who, who are great people and your friends and you know them, but then when you hear them talk, you're like, really? So I just had, <laughs> I just had a few really moments like, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> Which is always a highlight. So let's see, where do we begin? Um, it's Women's History Month, so we will get down to the nitty gritty. Tell us what it is really like being a woman in sports but a woman in sports at an executive level, because oftentimes we are only the only woman in the room at the level that you all sit at. So as you all have had these wonderful careers, you know, position primarily touching sports in some arena, talk to us about how it has, you know, where you started, what you saw, but where it is now in terms of the progression of how women, you know, are participating at an executive level, executive level in sports. I'll start with that. Um, I happen to work for a general manager who has four women running the top five departments in the network. So for Fox Sports Detroit, there's a woman in finance, a woman running marketing, a woman running advertising, and a woman who handles our traffic department. So I'm in a really unique situation, if there's such a thing. Um, and I guess there's not really unique, but I'm in a unique situation in the sense that you don't hear of that in most of the regional sports networks. But from the standpoint of coming in at this level, you know, you get a lot of men who think, why in the world would she be the person that's responsible for all of the sales? And you all that are in this room, you know, sales run it's pretty much the business side of the organization. But how can she, she didn't play, you know, professional sports or she wasn't in college in sports or she didn't come from one of the teams. She came from newspapers. The, the, the goal in obtaining me for Fox Sports Detroit was to grow our retail business. And we have done that. It's about dollar signs, right? Can this person bring in advertising revenue and represent our product in a way that elevates us? And we doubled the revenue, so I think we did just fine. <laughs> Marcy is actually being very modest because she's also a GM, general manager, and how many? General sales manager. General sales managers. Mm -hmm. How many in the United States? It's only? There's, there's 12 of us, and I'm the only female. She is the only female general sales manager in the United States, and that is a big deal. And of course, if she's the only woman, that means she's the only African-American woman who also holds that position. So, you know, again, in a world right now that is illuminated with so much stress and diversity, you know, good and bad, these type of things, I believe, are very important to make sure that we note. So. Oftentimes when I'm bragging about her, that's exactly what I say. <laughs> Molly, go ahead. Sure, so when I started out in the business, um, unfortunately I really didn't have any female mentors that I could look up to. I was doing um, an interview a couple weeks ago for a woman who writes a blog um, specifically about women in holding um, executive positions in sports and entertainment. Her question to me was, well, so who, who's your mentor? And while I've had a, a number of mentors throughout my career, when I started, um, there just weren't a lot of women who played in this space, um, understood that there were opportunities in this space. And so um, really for me, it's, it's really important to make sure I'm continuing to tell the story and forge the path for younger generations um, within the sports and entertainment industry. Because I didn't have that, and while I had tremendous mentors along the way and still do today, um, I never had that female mentorship. Um, and so I think that that's really important. And as we rise to the level at which we're at from an executive perspective, that we remember where we came from and we continue to give back to the individuals who are coming behind us. 
because we are going to forge a path just as those before us have done. And we need to make sure that it's the right path for the women that follow in our footsteps. So um, I guess a little bit different take on your question. No, but um, this is a talk. Anything? But Whatever for me, well. that's, that's um, you know, there just wasn't a lot of opportunities when I started out and a lot of people to look up to from a female perspective. So um, that's sort of how I, how I look and approach business um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything that I do is about giving back to the people that I work with, that I play in this community with, um, and making sure that I'm setting the right example, no matter whether you're a younger generation student, whether you're a female, whether you're a male. Um, I want to make sure that my story is told not because I'm necessarily a female, but because I do the right thing every day. And I, I walk the walk, I talk the talk. Um, and that's, that's really what's, what's most important to me and I think great opportunities for people coming behind us to look towards. What she said, I agree. <laughs> um, when I first, this is gonna sound kind of odd, but when I first started working in baseball, I don't think I really realized that I was one of the only women because the conversation wasn't out there. We weren't even thinking about where, what are the spaces and places where women are not. And so that's become much more prevalent recently. I think for me, when I first started working in baseball, what was more um, significant was that I was African American. Um, but now, many, many years later, it is becoming increasingly important, and, and, and I'm reminded all the time that I am one of the few women. Um, and I'm proud of that. And I think that's one of the responsibilities that we have as women when we are forging into new spaces is that we have to realize that we have something to bring to the table, right? And that we are unique and different and that's okay and that's great. And so think about what it is about you as a woman that you're bringing to the table that is different and that can change the conversation. So I frequently tell when we're talking about marketing in my office, this is a huge joke, I frequently tell my team when we're talking about something, I say, okay, but what does the single mom in Ferndale with two kids Think about that. Can she afford to come to the game? Will she, will her kids like doing that? Because I believe very strongly that as a woman, I'm at the table for a reason to keep the conversation going. Same thing I feel about being an African American, right? So I have a responsibility of who I am to keep the conversation going in, about things that haven't always been discussed at the table. I'm also, like Molly, super, super, super excited about the incredible number of women that I know that we have at Fox Sports Detroit, but particularly at the Red Wings and, and the Tigers, we have so many young women, and it is exciting to see these young women, and several of them are back there in the room. Um, so many young women that weren't there when I was there, and I just believe the future is so exciting for what I know they're going to bring to the table. Um, they're much more educated than I was in terms of sports. They all have these great sports degrees and stuff like that. I, you know, I just came to the table because I could do marketing. Right, and it didn't exist. So I'm thrilled about that, and I also, like Molly, am committed that I'm here because I did have two great mentors, the women mentors. They weren't in sports, but they were amazing women who mentored me from a business perspective. But I do everything I can to make sure that I'm reaching back and helping to educate and helping to have those conversations. If it's the, yes, you need to take the yoga pants off conversation, I'm the one to do that, <laughs> right? Because I think the world is, I think we're in a crisis. We're in a yoga pants crisis. Um, so I'm the one that will do that. I'll also talk to you about, uh, right. And, and, and flip flops. And flip flops. So Right, so it's, it's important. So I will have those conversations because somebody did that for me and that's the only way we're all gonna survive as women and, and continue to make great contributions in sports. I just wanna add, since I didn't get to talk about um, mentoring women, it is so important and, and many of you in the room who know me know that I have mentees and I pride myself on making sure that we are giving back in the same way that Ellen and Molly both spoke about. It is imperative that women, when you get to this level, that you find someone that you can, whose career you can touch, that you can talk to, that can call you at any time and say, this is a dream, this is something I wanna do, and you stop what you're doing to make that happen for that person. That I'm really, really big on that. So I just wanted to add that. See, well, you can't get to the next question. No, it's, this is what we want. This is a talk at Google. And, and I just want to add what Marcia said about, there's, so there's mentoring, but there's also the friendships. And Marcia said it earlier that she can call on me or Molly, and you need that, right? You need on your
your on your executive level, whatever level you're on, you also need other women that you can shut the door and talk things through and say, am I doing this right? What do you think about this? And share. And so I'm thrilled that I have these ladies. There's also some other women. Uh, Marcia is director of marketing at Fox Sports Detroit, Lauren Pober. There's Rebecca Falk, who is the director of marketing over Intercom Radio. Those are like my soul sisters. I talk to them a gazillion times a day, and it's really, really important. And I think that I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for the network that I have in, in these women. That is wonderful. Like, I'm sitting here getting excited. So you guys said a few things that definitely struck me as we are sitting here. So two things. Let me see which one do I want to start with. You are actually, besides it being in the title, game changers. Marcia, you specifically mentioned that the technology and the information that you all began with even 10 years ago, it did not exist you all have evolved and watched social media and all these other platforms. Google, we're not that old, <laughs> impact your business. Tell us what that looks like from where you sit. We see it from, oh, I can watch sports anywhere now. But talk to us about the evolution, the technology, you know, of what sports is now, because not only were you game changers, but you are actually at the position now of dictating or and saying the type of technology that needs to evolve to support what people are looking for, what they're requiring. So what does that look like for you all? Go ahead, Marcia. I, I saw you, I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, it is true. You can watch TV anywhere, right? We watch it on our phones, we watch it on our tablets, we watch it on our 70 inch screens. And the beauty of, of technology now, you don't have to sit somewhere stationary to see a game. And the, one of the th strengths that Fox Sports has is the fact that we're on everything, right? We're on Roku, we're on your cable box, we're on your Sling TV, we're everywhere. You can access sports. Now you may have to authenticate, right? Through a cable subscriber or something but you're always gonna be able to watch their games, the Red Wings or the Tigers or the Pistons on Fox Sports Detroit. So technology from our perspective has just allowed us to open the world to our games. Let everyone be able to see the games wherever they are. Um, is that kind of what What's the challenges too, the same thing, you, because it's, it's happening, you know, but as you, as you sit here, well, the, what are some of the new technologies or just things that you all some, see evolving? People that, uh, so I'm in sales, right? And what is traditional sales is to sell TV, right? I wanna see those commercials on television. And it can be a struggle for some because they feel that we're competing with ourselves when we sell streaming. Mm -hmm. It's, okay, that's a, a lesser rate. It's maybe not as conducive as, as TV would be to a major agency, you're certainly not going to get the dollars from that standpoint. But the reality is people want to see it where they are. They want to watch TV where they are. And we have to be able to grow with the fact that you're going to get less money for that schedule, but it's beneficial to our company and our overall way in which we're doing business to recognize that we need to sell digitally and we need to sell streaming and we need to build those packages just as we with what we started with regular TV. So so on the from the sponsorship perspective, um, it's certainly changed in the last even five years, but even 10 years. And where we were 10 years ago was really the basic, the, the sale of, of what we would call in the industry spots and dots, right? And, and that's what it was about. And that's certainly still a component of selling partnerships and activating partnerships now. But um, what's becoming more and more prevalent is the desire for brands to be integrated into the brand in which they're partnering with, to have a connection. And that is driven so much through social, digital, web, all of those kinds of things. And so we need to continuously be creative in thinking about new assets that we can help 
bring to these partnerships that live above and beyond you know, a sign on a wall or an in-ice logo. Well, all those things are great and, and very important. They provide extreme value and exposure to partners. Um, it's about that extended and next level connection to the customer that these brands want to partner with. So our ability to have engagement with athletes and how does that come to life through social opportunities. Our opportunities to be able to, if you uh, have been downstairs in the concourse at Little Caesars Arena, to look at augmented reality virtual reality, how these kinds of things come to life within your building, within your brand, are, are really important. And I, I think um, augmented reality, virtual reality specifically, are two really big areas. Well, not totally t new technology. They're definitely t pieces of technology that can be taken to the next level, especially from a team and a building perspective, um, that we're going to continue to look to see how we can leverage uh, moving forward. Um, I, I'd say the challenge is, while, while similar to Marcia, is certainly the adoption of the new products, um, it also requires a pretty significant investment up front sometimes. And so to be able to create the story and um, be able to communicate what the ROI is to your leadership about how this is going to deliver on the back end, not only financially, which is most of the time the number one and most important thing, um, but also how it's going to create that extended connection to the customer. We talked, Ellen and I were actually in a meeting this morning, and we were talking about experiences. And it's not just about coming to a game anymore. It's about the experience that you have with your spouse, with your son or your daughter, with your neighbor. And so all of those pieces of technology can help bring that experience to life more and enhance it. And I would also, to sort of add on to what Molly is saying, it's also about, um, so I don't know how many people have used the, little, the district app. Not the ones who work for the district. OK. <laughs> OK. That's a shout out, Ellen. Shout Tell out. everyone what we should download or what we should the be district experiencing. App. Well, particularly because you're in this building. So the district app is amazing because it really helps to change the way that you navigate and experience the arena. It's like your personal little guide is right there with you. And it gives you parking information. It talks about merchandise. And also, if you download the app, you can get, correct me if I'm wrong, Amanda and Molly, you can get. Um, there might be different discount offers that you might get at times programmed into it. My point is this, that the way cu the customer expectation in terms of how they navigate arenas and ballparks has changed dramatically. And so that's what Molly is talking about. She's talked about from a sponsorship standpoint, but I mean from just from a customer service experience. There's lots of things that we used to do, um, or lots of things that um, we, just the way that we interact with the places that we go has completely changed. The other thing I want to say is that it's all about content. That's the biggest thing that has changed from a marketing standpoint. Um, the social media group falls under my responsibility at the ballpark. And we just hired a, um, a content producer. And all he's down in spring training, and all he's doing is creating these videos, 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 because we have to grow our social platform. And that is totally different than what it was like when I, fir when I first started working at the Tigers. We used to take the newspaper clips and copy them on the, on the copy machine and pass them around. And that's how we knew what was going on in the world. OK, hello. So I've been there a long time. But think about it now. We, as a brand, have to come up with content. And the other thing is that a couple years ago, you know, the ninth inning, turn the lights off, go home, that's it. We'd report back at 9 a.m. in the morning. No, it is 24 hours, seven days a week. And we have to be able to drive content, add content, and then also monitor player content, monitor what customers and consumers are saying about our brand and how we interact. So I would just say that we have become just a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week business because of the impact of digital. I just want to add something about content. <clears throat> As Ellen was talking about our social media platforms, those have grown just exponentially. And we have a social media manager who is 24 7. Mm -hmm. Courtney is posting and engaging with fans about the three brands that we represent, but it's a constant process. And in addition, we have all had to become 
much more familiar with social media platforms. I mean, I used to use Instagram to just monitor my daughter's Instagram. Now, I, now I'm like a real player on Instagram. You know, I'm following people, I'm watching things that are going on, but it also is important to watch what's going on in our industry through Instagram and Twitter, and I've got followers, and it's just mind-boggling that I'm in this space today when I, too, copied everything off the newspaper, cut, the, cut it out, sent it to all my clients, would run over to the Detroit Tigers and tell Ellen, did you read this? You, you're marketing, you really should be buying this in the newspaper. And that, that's how our world was, but it's no longer that today. And so Fox Sports continues to evolve, if you will, with our social platforms as well as our digital platforms. Can I just add one quick thing? And the other thing is the, the one thing that we're still competing with is the live game experience. Uh -huh. So there's all these wonderful ways for people to watch the game. The game can go with you. You can do out, you can pause the game. But I still want you to come to the ballpark. Absolutely. I need you to come to the ballpark and I need you to enjoy the green grass and have a conversation with your friend and have a beer, have a hot dog, um, have a Miller Coors product. Um, I need you. <laughs> Have a Pepsi, have a Pepsi, um, Little Caesar's Pizza. Um, but that's important, right? That's, that is really our biggest competitor from a marketing standpoint is that people can take it with you. And that's great, but I also need you, and I think Fox Sports Detroit is great about this, is that they understand that there's an intricate balance between promoting the digital interaction with the, with the product and also with driving people because they don't want an empty ballpark any more than I do. Because doesn't it, show up well on TV. it doesn't show up well on TV. It's not fun, right? So together we were figuring out how to create this method or this model so that we're driving people into the ballpark to experience it live, but also asking them to enjoy it on their mobile devices so that we can integrate different messages that we need to so that Marcia can deliver and my group, our, our sponsorship group, Molly, can, can get what they need from a, from a sales standpoint. How do you all juggle it all? <laughs> and I'm asking specifically as I'm hearing this, working in a marketing world, knowing you know the challenges, being a mother, having friends, families, all of these things, which is innate to women. We somehow figure out how to juggle it all but at the same time as you are existing in this world to do all things as a woman, what are you, how are you all doing that? Because to go from using a copier <laughs> and running over, I think that is, a, I cannot wait to turn this into a oh, snippet. Oh, these are gonna be short. So I was like, oh, this is social media gold right now. That's what I'm actually thinking. I, I was not lying. Marcia was, my, I was Marcia's client at the, that's how we met. Right. I was Marcia's client at the Detroit News and Free Press and she is not kidding. She would drive the newspaper <laughs> over to me and go, here Ellen, did you see this? You should, this is how we're gonna lay your ad out. That right. is so <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> Forget that Google stuff. It was like, get, get in your car and Google over there. <laughs> well, no, seriously, let's, words of wisdom. You know, we hear it and, and you make it happen and it seems seamless. And I think, especially sitting on the side of supporting entrepreneurs, many in this room, you know, you struggle with feeling adequate, which oftentimes being a woman and all these other things of life's changing and how do we stay relevant and all these things that are socially, I feel like, put on us anyway. You know, you're looking at, but really, what are your words of wisdom at being at such a high level, being the only in your position oftentimes, if not in the room at a very minimum, how do you actually, you know, uh, how do you just keep, keep some type of balance? What would you recommend or what would you say? And it may not be real balance, but you know, day by day, <laughs> how do you handle it? I have to go first. No. I can't like feed off no. of their ideas. <laughs> So this is gonna sound really, really crazy, but one of the things that I am committed to doing is making sure this is gonna sound crazy, that I feel good about the way I look. So I tell the young women in my office who do special events and promotions and they're working long hours and stuff like that, I'm like, nope, stop. While you're planning an event, I'm like, nope, stop. The event's gonna start in a minute. Go put your makeup on, um, comb your hair, look organized. Because if you don't look organized and you don't feel organized, then no one else is gonna have confidence in you. 
So, you know, I try to have everything in my office from like makeup, to extra shoes, to everything so that I can always come presentable because I will, that actually makes a difference and you actually will feel good about yourself. So it's about being prepared and having all those resources and then a friend that you can go drive something in my teeth right. and she'll tell you the truth. Um, so that's part of it. And then also I think you have to have a hobby. Right, because we work really, really, really long hours. I'm not sure how Marcia does it because she has to champion Red Wings, Tigers, and Pistons. So at least I get a little bit of an off season. But you, you have to have a hobby. I have become an avid reader. I, I read all of the time because it's the only time when I'm at home that I can just sort of escape. Mm -hmm. And you have to give yourself the escape um, because you, you, you have to have that balance. And for a long time, I didn't give myself that balance. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked, we work 81 home games, right? So that's a lot. And then sometimes they start, they, they start at 7 o'clock during the evenings, and sometimes they'll end at 9, sometimes they'll end at 10, sometimes they'll have a rain delay, and they'll end much later than that. So you, you have to force yourself to have a hobby and, and give balance. I think Katrina's word juggle is probably, at least in, in my experience, better than balance. I, I, I don't truly know if there is a balance to be had in sports and entertainment. Um, I mean, you, there's not a job description out there that doesn't say nights, weekends, holidays. Right. should say, be prepared to dig in, because right. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, but it, certainly, in addition to what Ellen said, I would say, um, it's really important to have a support system, whatever that means for you. For me, it's my husband. We work both crazy hours, but he supports me and supports my career. And so we make sacrifices every day to make sure that each one of us has the opportunity to grow and succeed in what we want to do. But that may be different for the person sitting across the table from you. It may be your parents. It may be your daughter. It may be the people that you work with. I can tell you that I would not make it through the day if it were not for the people that work here. For the women that sit in the back of this room who I work with every day, they keep me going. And that support system is so important. If you don't have that support system inside of work and, and outside of work, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. What keeps you going if you don't have those people around you every single day that you want to go to battle for? Um, it makes the nights, the weekends, all the long hours worth it when you have the support system that's there to help keeping you going when it's not all roses, right? There are tough times. And so you need those people to be able to help keep you going. <clears throat> Everything that they said. <laughs> um, but the, the juggling part, I didn't think about it that way. But Molly, you're absolutely correct. It, it's hard to say what balance is. Um, and what balance is to one person is probably not balance. Um, in my life, I do a lot of games, right? I go to Red Wings, Pistons, and Tigers games, as Ellen mentioned. And then I, you know, I've got two daughters, you know, I, they're 27 and 20, and both out of town now. So I'm really that empty nester, but I adopted a dog, so I'm really not an empty nester. <laughs> she is super important. But, and so life balance even includes the dog, right? My mother comes to my house every day from 11 to 3 just to, Kind of see after the dog. She misses her grandkids, but she thinks the dog is good. She thinks the dog's cool. But I, I, I also want to add that having good friends, um, people in the business, people out of the business. I'm in a lot of ladies' organizations. I get a lot of strength and encouragement from that. I have a lot of professional things that I do. There's a lot of strength and balance that comes with that. Um, and then I, I am a golfer, you know, and so I've picked up golf maybe 20, 25 years ago. And I, on Wednesday nights, I play with my league and I'm there every Wednesday. And I move things around so that I can make sure that I do the one hobby that I enjoy, that I do that. And so I think you have to find things that you, you enjoy and make that a part of your life. I was just going to say, and also create a schedule. So, like, I get my hair done at 6.30 in the morning on, fr on Fridays so that she just went at 6.30 in the morning on Thursday. But that's so that I don't have to. Hair's, impor hair's important to me, but I don't have to deal with that in the middle of the week, in the middle of the day, right? Marcia 
goes to yoga at 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm supposed to, but I never make it. But Marcia <laughs> goes to yoga at 5 a.m. in the morning, two days a week, so that she can get that out of the way, so that she can then start her day fresh. And the, thick, the maintenance things are out of the way. So it's kind of important to think about your schedule and the things that are important to you and how can you create a day so that you can get all the things in that you need to do and still feel really good about yourself and think about expanding you know, 6 a.m. is really not that early. It's not that early to get my hair done. It's kind of early for yoga, but anyway. <laughs> get to yoga, Alan. <laughs> She's gonna call me tomorrow morning. Get to yoga. Get to yoga. Okay, so I'm gonna switch it up a little bit before we answer, or open up the floor for answering question because Ellen actually has a hard stop. I, I just feel so privileged right now that you all were able to come together and be clear Part of them being able to come together was related to opening day. Everybody, I was like, so how is opening day affecting everybody's schedule? No, not that week, not that day, spring training. I was like, this is real. You know, when in you, lives, <laughs> in their lives, you know, we look at sports and it's so glamorous and, and glorious as you see it. But when you get to the business side of it, and I can say from personal experience, sometimes I'm like, you have another game today? As much as I like sports, I'm like, you do? You are where today? <laughs> but, you know, definitely a highlight and a benefit. So we'll do a, a little bit, just quick round robin, just to hear, you know, a little, and whatever comes first to your mind. So as I'm looking at you, Ellen, this season, <laughs> who are you? Like, one word, who Ellen is? A friend. Strong. You guys keep doing this, Mike. Compassion. Okay. I'm a compassionate person. When you are making those hard decisions and having those tough conversations, who are you then? <laughs> you know, I, this really, it requires more than one word. <laughs> that, that requires more than one word. And I, it's interesting that you gave the mic to me and I said compassion. When I am having a rough time or, you know, you have employees that are having a rough time or you have issues that are going on, I'm still compassionate, mm -hmm. you know, and um, one of the podcast, I look, listen to a lot of podcasts. If you guys don't do that, you really should do, listen to podcasts. They're really great. Yeah. But um, I was listening to a podcast with Jeff, Jeff Weiner, mm -hmm. who is CEO for LinkedIn, and he talks about compassionate leadership. And as I'm listening to this guy, I'm like, that's me. I have literally fired a person and went and had wine with them that same evening. Wow. It doesn't take, you, it do, you don't have to be mean. If, if someone is not doing their job, then you need to, it's on you. You need to either figure out how to train that person to do their job or how to find a role that perhaps they would be better suited for or find a way to transition them out of that role, right? I mean, it's, it's not, it is personal, but it's not personal, right? It's about whether or not this business is right for you. And I think you can do all of that with compassion. Before you answer, Molly, that is such a good point because Women's History Month, Women's Panel, men traditionally do not have to explain that. When we talk about hard conversations, we talk about, you know, butting heads, working for opposite teams, all of those things. When it comes to men generally, it's almost celebrated like, hey, you know, they had a hard conversation. I had to tell them how it is, but we went out to dinner afterwards. However, when a woman who is the executive, the president or the CEO, now it becomes a conversation because it was, oh, she fired me. And now it becomes something else, like almost how dare you? And many of us, even if you haven't experienced it personally, I know you've probably heard this story. So just, a, you know, that really resonated well with me because I think about my career and I was fired one time when I was younger and he told me, Kay, you gotta go. And I just <laughs> looked at him like, oh, I think I'm... but to this day, Mr. Johnson, hi, Mr. Johnson, still love him to this day. <laughs> it was the best thing because I was going through my, I was actually just coming out of high school and all that, but he fired me and it was okay. And he made me stronger. And he ended up working together with him again. As I, go, I still go see him and all of those type of things. But being a woman, we, you know, that's just one of the things that just touched me that we typically don't have to explain. But you're right, the, the description of it when he fired me and I experienced, experienced that, he was naturally still, it was almost like, I knew it was with love. 
I knew I needed to step it up. He was frustrated and he did what he had to do. And it was one of my best life learned lessons. Normally they are. Mm -hmm. Normally they are when you have to make that kind of a decision, but I won't. Oh, Thorough. Right. Molly's like, and she said one word. <laughs> no, wait, no, rule follower. No, no, no. no. <laughs> and you know I'm not, so. <laughs> thorough, and what would you add to that? Because I do, I, I really like how Marcia elaborated on it. You're thorough, but words of wisdom with hard conversations. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, when we're making difficult decisions and having conversations at an executive level, it's important to be, it, it doesn't really matter what level you're at. When you're making a decision, it is important to be thorough and thoughtful about everything that could possibly be affected by the decision that you're doing, right? In your, in your personal life, in business, right? Every decision that you make has consequences, has repercussions, whatever it might be, has positive outcomes. So being thorough and thinking through all of the possibilities is really important. It's very easy to be able to be first to judge, to be first to talk, right? But how do we take a step back and listen, absorb, think about everything that, um, that may be uh, a result of the decision that we're making, and then make the decision? So you're gonna, you're, think, you're gonna think I was cheating, I wasn't. I was gonna say knowledgeable. And that is similar exactly to what um, Molly was saying to make sure that, that I have asked the second, third, and fourth questions before I make a decision and to make sure that everything has been thought through and, and exactly what Molly said. Okay, I cannot believe we're at 152 so fast, so. I am actually going to open the floor for questions. I think this is a perfect time. We've definitely touched upon a few topics. Um, I did not say this at the beginning. The hashtag, of course, is Google Digital Coaches. I'm totally giving myself a uh, plug. <laughs> and hashtag talks at Google, to be honest with you. So use those two uh, hashtags if you catch pictures today. I hope you are. So all right, I am going to go ahead and come out of uh, picture view. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll focus on them, but uh, Tony, you have a question? Yes. Um, so there are some statistics around uh, the fastest group of entrepreneurs in the country, and it happened to be women of Michigan. And so my question is, how engaged are your organizations or yourself personally with the startup community of female entrepreneurs here in Detroit, if at all? I just went to the lip bar. If you haven't been to the lip bar, guys, that is so cool. I, I'm like, oh my God, this, but I'm telling you, Detroit is just a cool spot right now, right? And there are so many different places that you can go um, in the downtown area and in Livernois in neighborhoods that are owned by women. So I, if I read about a place, I try to make it my business to frequent the wood burn, Woodside, Woodburn um, Spa, Wood Spa. Um, another woman owns that. Um, there are tons of places, and I, I try to look for them. I try to search out, you know, making sure that I'm giving back to the community in which I live in. Um, I volunteer a lot, I, so I'm, I got that covered. And even if you see opportunities within your organizations to engage with startups, if, if you identify possibilities. So Major League Baseball has a diverse business partners program, um, and it's specifically designed to make sure that we are engaging with um, women and minority-owned businesses. So I would encourage you um, to, to go look at Major League Baseball and the diverse business partners program, and also that program is extended, obviously, through the Detroit Tigers. Right, that's not my area of expertise, so I don't want to really elaborate, but there is a commitment that we do business with um, small, with, with women-owned and minority-owned businesses. The other thing is that I think that I would take a look at the District of Detroit, and I would look at the space that we're in and, and this area. There's lots of opportunities for um, development here. So if you're looking for, and I, I, again, that's not my area of expertise, but I do know that the idea is that we're, we're obviously going to continue to grow the District of Detroit, but this is a perfect place. I mean, if you are a small business owner or a business owner and you want to try to be at the right place where you have fan, 40,000 fans from Comerica Park and 60,000 fans from Ford Field and 20,000 fans for, at the LCA, this is the place to be. So I would do your due diligence if you're a small business owner 
um, large business owner and try to figure out how you can do something with the district of Detroit, at least, at least investigate. Um, you know, similar to Marcy, I definitely try to, to frequent a lot of those, those businesses here downtown. Specifically, one that I frequent very often is K9 to 5. Love them. Yeah. Yay! Um, woman entrepreneur and business owner. Um, so my dogs are so appreciative because they do not love the inside of my walls of my house um, every single day. But um, beyond that, I would say, in addition to what the, the Tigers are doing, um, specifically the Tigers, and then certainly on a league level, um, us here at the Red Wings are continuously looking looking at ways that we impact the community in which we live. And moving here to the District of Detroit has opened up a lot of opportunities for us. And so um, if on our website, there are um, there's a whole showcase of, of areas in which we are touching the community that we work in, um, and always looking to expand on, on that work. Um, so again, similar to Ellen, this is not my, my area of expertise, but I, I did oversee community relations for a couple of years, and the individual who runs that is a fantastic gentleman, Kevin Brown. Him and his team do a lot, and he is extremely passionate about this city and um, the work that us as an organization, the Detroit Red Wings Olympia Entertainment, can do to impact the community that we work in. My name is Antonise. Oh, it went on. I think back. Four, 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 four. I can speak loud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Antonise. I actually work in uh, PR, communications, marketing, and all of the whole umbrella of things. But my passion has always been more focused on the entertainment, sports, music side of things. Now, granted, it's very difficult, obviously, to get into those types of fields, especially as a woman, young woman, woman of color, you know, just different types of aspects. So if you, you guys have given me some great gems to take home, but if you could kind of let me know what kind of spaces, people, or organizations, or things I should look into to try to find those types of opportunities to work in it. Are you still in college? No. I'm, okay, no, I'm so you're... I'm a professional now. I'm a senior kind of executive up the street at a PR firm, but just kind of looking for, you know, advice. I, I mean, I, I would tell you, like I tell my 28-year-old, if you're waiting for someone to come and find you, they won't. So go find what it is that you're looking for. If it's, um, I want to work in TV, find someone on TV, write them a note, send them an email. I answer all of my emails. I may not answer them soon, as these ladies may say. <laughs> she'll, get, she'll get to you. But I answer all of them. And as we all have expressed, we are really passionate about trying to formulate relationships with women, younger women, women who aspire to do what we do. So find it. Look for it. Send the person a note. Send them a text message. Send them an email. Get on their Instagram. You can you can Slide Google the right through LinkedIn. <laughs> you know, Google them, find out what they're doing, and hit them up on LinkedIn. I mean, I, I answer all of it. So, try, and try to get some direction there. I would also say to, to use your network. This town is, while we are very large, we are very, very small, small. Okay. and um, I guarantee that you probably know a handful of people that know people that work across the sports and entertainment industry just here in Detroit. Um, and so use your network. Talk to people. I mean, you know, just buy people coffee, take them out to lunch, just pick their brain, get to know, see who they know, who they don't know, how they can make introductions for you. Um, and I guess my my piece of advice, I, this, is, this is not a room of students, so, but use, don't Go to your network when you, when you need something. And so different, I understand, because you're interested in this space. Um, but always keep that in mind. That's, a, that's a, something that's really important to me, is making sure that I'm exercising my network all year round, even when I don't necessarily need something. Because there's nothing worse than somebody that comes to you just when they need something, right? So anyways. That's the only time you hear from them. Yeah. <laughs> I would just add real quickly, think out of the box, right? So there's 30, base, there's 30 major league baseball teams. <coughs> so there's only 30 of me. So you have to think about what are the other companies, 
programs, products that touch sports or touch entertainment. I always tell interns that. They say, I want to work in sports. I'm like, OK, well, that doesn't mean you have to work for a team or for a league. It means you could work um, in broadcasting, or you could work for a, a, a very high level partner corporate corporation that invests a lot in um, their sports sponsorships. So there's all different kinds of ways of looking at sports and entertainment, not just the traditional ways. And it might be a little bit easier to get, to get into one of the non-traditional ways than one of the traditional ways. But I wish you great success. Thank you so much. Uh, can you say phenomenal? <laughs> phenomenal women, phenomenal, phenomenal for so many reasons. And I want to say thank you all. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, as a lady, I'm getting a little sappy here, a little teary, so we're going to going to pull it in. <laughs> but again, I have the opportunity to speak often always impressed with the people that I meet and you know always love to hear stories always love to ask questions so being able to ask questions and hear the stories of people that you look up to people that you love people that you know you can call on and they will be there for you at a drop of a dime so now Molly I feel like oh, welcome to the party sister <laughs> And it, feel, it feels good because we're in a space right now and I'm entering that space too. It's a little bit weird for me, but I'm there too, where when people call me, it makes me feel great that I can answer. Trina, I need, yes, what is it? Give me 15 minutes and I will call you right back. And generally, I'm a pretty good connector and it's because of you know, the leadership, the mentorship, and the things that have happened in my life for women like this who sit here, who have made it happen for me. I've always told people, I give because those gave to me when I was not deserving. Even when I did not deserve the opportunity, so I felt they saw something in me and said, it's okay, it's okay. I believe you and I know you will be okay. Even if you're not all the way there right now, I will stand there for you and I will support you. And this panel today is a testimony to that because I know I was totally like, Lord, please allow them all to have a scheduled time that will meet up. <laughs> and that will work for them and everybody and even Google and everyone who's sitting in this room because I had a mild panic attack before I started. I was like, oh God, who's coming? <laughs> I was like, they are somebody, but is somebody coming to see you? <laughs> so I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to actually wrap up again because their time is very valuable. We don't want to overextend them. Um, you may be able to catch them. We have to do a couple of things, which, which be the formal, of uh, take a couple of pictures and you know shake a couple of hands. So if they can't get to you right now, don't be discouraged. They are accessible as, as we had mentioned. Um, so I think that's about it. So. Thank you so much for joining us today. Talks at Google, Game Changers in Sports. We had our wonderful panelists, Marcia Turner, Molly, let me get it right this time, Wardak. Marcia Turner, Molly Wardak, Ellen Hills Zerang. Thank you so much for joining us for official Talks at Google, sponsored by Google Digital Coaches Detroit. <laughs>